Y'all need some help, okay? I am completely out of touch with what is acceptable in public, apparently, and uh, here's a little guideline on polite public conversation, because apparently y'all degenerate people out there have lost your way, so let's talk. Whew, okay, there's a few things that you don't talk about in polite conversation in public, and what is it, four or five things off the top of my head? Let's see if I can recount them. Money, politics, religion, and sex. You don't talk about them in public. Why exactly? Uh, I guess social cohesion. You know, if, if I'm walking down the street yelling some obscenities, people aren't really going to uh, want to interact with me, okay? We're all here pretending to be well put together people just trying to buy groceries. <laughs> I'm not... Uh, I'm not really looking for someone to come up to me and ask my preferences uh, behind closed doors, let's put it that way. Uh, mm, I was recently shared a clip of some people who walked up to strangers and asked them their preferences in the bedroom. And the people answered the questions on the street. I am baffled by this. I, this, this blows my mind. One. How do you not just walk away from someone who's asking you such a question? And two, where did you think it was acceptable to just walk up and ask someone such a personal question? That is not only incredibly rude, but just frankly kind of scary. If you're going to ask me my preferences of anything behind closed doors, I'm going to ignore you and keep walking. And these people interacted with the camera person in this regard. Uh, clearly, I... I'm very out of touch with the modern day, let's put it that way. So, of those four topics that I brought up, here's a little primer. Here's something that can help you out, okay? Let's start with money. Why do we not talk about money in polite conversation in public with someone who ranges from a stranger to an acquaintance? Well, one, you're going to develop some form of jealousy or aggression in the person somehow and that person could be you so if you walk up to them and say yeah i, mm, I make twenty thousand dollars a month maybe they don't make that much and now they don't want to be your friend anymore in fact they might get kind of hostile towards you and <laughs> we could talk all day about the repercussions of that or the causes of such but it's not something you bring up because you're going to create dividers between you and others based on money right and it works the other way too. You're in the workplace and you find out that your coworker makes $20,000 more than you doing the same job, you're gonna be jealous of them. There's gonna be a problem in the workplace. You're gonna go to your boss and complain about that, hopefully ask for a raise, You know, figure out how to get yours. Absolutely, absolutely. When is it okay to talk about money? You know, I'm sitting down at dinner with my brother. We're talking about finances for our family. Uh, I'm talking about how much I make. He's talking about how much he makes. You know, we maybe we share budget ideas. Budgeting, great example. You're trying to help someone organize their money. If they want that help, go to town. But bringing it up in conversation, either A, you're... I wish there was a polite way to say what I want to say, but uh, you are being arrogant in a conversation, right? You're like, yes, <laughs> I make so much. <laughs> Insert whatever conversation you want. You're you're not making any friends with that conversation, okay? Um, with an acquaintance, you're you're not creating a lasting friendship by bringing up money. I right? uh, outside of them asking for help, there's no reason to ever bring it up, ever. Okay, and if you've ever spent any amount of time walking around town, you realize the disparity between incomes of people. Fair to say, uh, any conversation in that regard is just going to cause some issues in the social circle. Now, I'm all for sharing salaries, for sharing your income amounts, for like workers getting together and figuring out, like, what do you get paid? What do you get paid? There is a place for unionization, let's say. Absolutely. Absolutely, but uh, that's outside the scope of this conversation. 
this is more like um, not alienating people you run into. Simple enough, right? But also the reverse of that. If you don't make a lot of money running around and yelling like, you should give me a dollar because you make more money than me. Also unacceptable, right? <laughs> people on the side of the road asking for a dollar or something, that's different than what I'm talking about. They're, they're trying to get by. They're struggling to survive. That, that is outside the scope of what I'm talking about. We, we're talking about someone who's like, oh, I've worked my whole life and I've only made $20,000 across the last 10 years and... Oh, you, you know, this is horrible. Like, yeah, that is pretty horrible. But, uh, like, what are you doing to fix it? And are you coming to me for help? Like, should we work together to kind of fix your situation? Or are you just, like, throwing problems at me? So coming from the top down, you create walls. Coming from the bottom up, you scare the crap out of people. And um, who knows? You might pull a knife and ask for everything in my wallet. I don't know, right? So polite conversation around money is you just you just don't bring it up <laughs> don't talk about it okay um politics Ugh. <laughs> if you've seen my video on how fear propaganda cripples your mind you understand that i'm i live under a rock okay like what did this candidate say what did that candidate say what are they promising nowadays like I, it's all just a rhetoric meant to confuse, baffle, or otherwise persuade you to vote for them, put them in a position of power, and they'll solve all the problems. <laughs> yeah, right. I, a politician's not going to fix your life, and let's remove that. It's outside the scope of this video. I'm going to say that like six or seven times here. Um, politics and conversation, that dinner with my brother is a good example, could be a place where you could talk about it. You know, with your spouse. I talk politics with my wife. Yeah, we figure out, like, who should we vote for, what is good for our family, what is good for the nation. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, in the workplace, I'm probably the most milk toast person you're ever going to talk to. In, in public, at a party, it's the same thing. Someone brings something up, uh, I find an excuse to leave. Like, oh, look... The hors d'oeuvres over there. I'm going to go try a little snack or something. Oh, I'm working on this report. I got to get back to my desk and figure this thing out. Like, I, I never express political opinions in public because of the same issue. Remember the top-down thing with money? Like, you're going to make walls with people. Here, check this out in the workplace. Your coworkers talking about politics. They have an opinion, right? If you agree with them, you just wasted a bunch of time. You could have been, you know, browsing the internet after getting your work done. It's just a, like, cool, you all sat around and agreed on things. You know, if you disagree, you've now created a wall between you and that person, okay? It may not be a major wall. You know, you might not be extremist on either sides of the thing, but there's going to be a subconscious blocking in you or the other person. Like, ah, uh, yeah. Janet, <laughs> she supports mass murder. <laughs> like, it's, it's going to be an issue. And I, I really hope no candidate is supporting mass murder at this point. But you get my point. Uh, it's, it's divisive in our country right now. Maybe it'll be that way forever. Maybe it's always been that way. I don't know. But what I do know is that when you express your opinion, you're making those walls with people around you. And so in the workplace, you're just creating an environment where it's hard to get work done. And like, for some reason, for, for one reason or another, people are not going to want to work with you because your opinions differ. It's just another way to divide us. And so why bring that up with acquaintances or coworkers or strangers? Or, uh, <laughs> just avoid it. Don't go into that. So we've covered money. We've covered politics. What's the next thing? Religion. Religion is very personal, okay? Uh, you can find lots of arguments on both the atheistic side and the religious side for why it's not personal, why you should evangelize to people. Uh, absolutely. But it's the same issue in the workplace or with acquaintance. You're, you're creating walls. <laughs> you're either going to push people away very quickly or you're going to waste a lot of time. Just... <laughs>
sitting there agreeing. Ooh, I love my echo chamber. Everyone gets along. We all agree on the thing. What a waste of time. Why did you even bring that up? In public, I mean, when you're walking down the street in a major city, right, you hear some dude preaching on the corner. What happens? Either you agree with them or you support them uh, in a removed position. You know, like there's a Christian street preacher and you're not that denomination of Christianity, right? But you're still like, yeah, honk for Jesus, way to go, like, cool. Or they're the crazy dude on the corner yelling like, the end times are here, ah, religion this, religion that. Ah. You tend to walk quickly past them, you know, or, or like change what side of the street you're walking on. Like, you don't want to go near the crazy person yelling about the thing. It's, <laughs> it's not something in polite conversation that generates a lot of connection. Um, maybe that's why it's one of the four things you don't talk about in polite conversation. Maybe. Let's figure this out together. Let's get to the bottom of this. Because we don't know how to talk to each other anymore. <laughs> this is just one subject on the way to figuring out how do we communicate with each other, right? Um, sitting around that dinner table with my brother. We'll talk about religion. It's no problem. He's a close member of family. My wife and I, we're religious. We talk about religion all the time. It's great. In the workplace, there are some people that talk about religion. Now that I'm thinking about it, there are, yeah, that is, that is their jam. They're all about it. The way they do it is by making it personal. They go, oh, hey, yep, I love my God. And you're like, that's cool, Janet. Do you have the report? that we're all waiting for that's awesome you know and that's not a problem but when janet comes to you and it's just like have you been to church today i need you to go to church immediately like that one that never happens but two as you you see like as you move closer to that on the spectrum of conversation it starts to make walls between people you know Maybe that's the thesis here. Maybe that's why it's all polite conversation, why it's organized in such a way, or was organized in such a way, that th these are the four things you don't talk about. Because it makes walls between people. It separates the members of society. Yeah, food for thought, right? And now we get to the most degenerate part of the conversation, okay? <sighs> sexual activity, sexual preferences. Why is this brought up in public ever, ever, from the media, from people on the street? We've all seen the videos of people asking other people on the street, like, oh, uh, what do you do that drives your man wild? Go look it up, okay? What do you do? Do you prefer X or Y? Do you, <laughs> do, you do this thing? Do you like the certain configuration of human bodies? <laughs> What? Okay. Pro tip. Someone asks you that in the street, run away from them. They're a crazy person. Or they're looking to blow up on the internet. I don't... What are you doing? Sharing that with others. First of all, don't reply to that. Second, shame them for asking such a thing. Uh, you know, maybe rule zero, just ignore them and keep walking. Okay? Other than my wife, I don't want anyone to know anything about my personal life or the configurations of my body in the bedroom. There's no, nothing that I want to share with anyone. And the fact that we're asking these kinds of questions in the street kind of makes me a little nervous for society. I mean, you're in such a place now, society, that people are filming this and asking you very personal questions. What? What? <laughs> I feel like yesterday, before I saw some of these clips, I was living in the 1950s, like, just for example. And, and then I woke up, and you see a clip like that, and you go, What happened? <laughs> what? <laughs> Who would think it's even remotely acceptable to ask a woman what she prefers in the bedroom in public? That, like, I... <laughs> I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. I feel like I've, I've woken up to a society that I don't relate to in the slightest. 
Uh, so it, it kind of makes me a little nervous seeing this. And I've got kids. They're going to be raised in this society. Does this get worse? Does it get worse to a point and then things get bad enough and some kind of explosion happens of sorts? I'm not advocating any violence. Uh, something happens and society changes and we reverse course and now suddenly people in the streets aren't talking about sexual configurations in the bedroom. Uh, maybe. But I got kids. I'm, I'm worried. Like, What's going to happen in the next 30 years? We're talking about like, what do you like when your partner does the thing? And the people are answering and view counts are going through the roof and, and like they're getting famous deals. They get to go make some career out of this thing. What? What? That's insane to me. So this is the fourth category of polite conversation that you don't partake in, right? And I don't necessarily think we didn't talk about it because it makes walls between people. I think we didn't talk about it because... <sighs> okay, maybe I'm wrong. Because it does make walls between people. But the walls are so extravagant, sudden, and tall that it's, it's an immediate alienation. It's an immediate rejection of whatever you're seeing, doing, hearing. You go, oh my god, I can't believe you prefer X and Y. Oh lordy, I can't believe you're talking about that in general. It's almost like a move away from monogamy has brought us to this point of degeneracy. I, I, I'm not trying to push any views on anyone. I'm just making observations. It startled me seeing these clips. It startled me. I, I'm 30-something years old. I'll do a video on that later. Um, I'm not... I'm just an average Joe. You know, I'm living my life. I go to work. I raise my kids. And, you know, I, I eat some food from time to time. And then you hear the things that people are saying to each other. And you, you're like, that's my nation? That's the society I'm a part of? I'm just... I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I've been left behind by the culture in my 30s. I'm done for, in a way. <laughs> so, yeah. What is the value... Excuse me. What is the value of these polite conversation rules? You know, don't talk about these four things in public. The value is a cohesive society. The value is you kind of know what to expect from people behavior-wise, but it also is a lack of barriers being made between others. So you aren't, you aren't in a society where everyone could be your enemy, for lack of a better word, right? Like, oh, they disagree with me on politics, but you'd never know that because you only talk about that with your wife. Oh, they, they make a bajillion dollars and I don't. So I hate them because I'm jealous. Yeah, that wouldn't happen because you're not talking about that. Oh, they're <laughs> a radical religious extremist, but you wouldn't know that because you go to church and they go to church and everyone's quiet about it and you do your thing. Oh, they, whew, they involved quite a bit behind closed doors in their bedroom. Oh man, I, I wait till I tell you what they did, okay? And now you think of them as lesser because they're a freak in your eyes. I, literally and metaphorically. And <laughs> so the value of having these polite conversation rules in society, these, these mores, these norms of how we communicate with each other, was that it created a cohesion where everyone, you know, you did your thing, you did your work, you participated in society in whatever way you did, but you also had your own personal life and everything was peaceful. And I'm not saying that in some time in the past everything worked out and it was peaceful, but it was one mechanism within which people got along. If you have differences, you just go your separate ways. I don't have to talk to that guy who believes in the crazy things. But now, not only are we engaging in that conversation on the streets, but we're also inundated with it constantly online. In a way that it's it's pushed on us. It's 
it's available every time you open a social media site. These people's preferences, lifestyles, um, what they want. And I'm not, I'm not saying like, oh, this group is pushing things. No, 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 no. I'm saying you're just exposed to all this opinion, all of these different matters constantly. Even if you don't want to be, this thing went viral and now you're hearing like what this girl does in her free time. This is bigger than this video. This is like the effects of technology on people. This is the effects of social mores changing. And now we talk about these things in public. I, I, I don't know. I feel like this could be a, a whole video series on its own. But um, you could do a lot in your life to just to become a person who people want to talk to because you don't bring up these four things. Like, oh, everything around me is kind of insane. Uh, <laughs> you should have heard, heard Tom the other day. <laughs> he was talking all kinds of things. But Luke, oh, I like talking with Luke. He's really chilled out. And he never once expressed some opinion that bothered me. I don't know. There could be some value in that. I'm going to expand on this a little bit. I was just a little shocked to uh, see some of these videos, to see, like, where is society right now? What do we find interesting? What is going viral? What is big and exciting? There's a lot to cover here. And I hope you're well. I hope you conduct yourself well in your personal life. And try not to erect too many barriers between you and other people. And, and that's one thing we don't talk about. It's like everything online is recorded forever. It's always there. <laughs> once it's out there oh yeah you're the the girl from the video who did the thing it's always there so maybe that's another uh, positive side effect of not talking about these four topics in public was that uh, your reputation has a little more chance to stay positive to stay untainted in a way just a thought just a thought I'm going to go grocery shopping after this. Let's see who tries to film me and ask my preferences, okay? <laughs> you have a great day. Thank you for watching. This was all over the place. And uh, what do you think down below? Uh, is this a good direction for society go in, to go in? Uh, should we talk about all these things and just blare your opinion, your preferences? Just, you know, let it go. Is that a good thing? Or were we on to something? when we don't talk about religion, sex, money, and politics with the general public. I don't know yet. Let's find out. Take care of yourself. Have a great day. Talk to you later.